Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Ron Line Report. Today's guest, one of my favorite people in the sport. Been able to watch this man as a pro for a very long time. Always happy to have him on as a guest. Please welcome Victor Martinez. How are you, Victor? So, Ron, hello, everybody. And the loyalist and faithfuls. Yeah. How are you guys? Good to be here again. Uh, I want to congratulate you on something totally unrelated to bodybuilding. You just became recently a U.S. citizen, correct? Yes, yes. And a new nickname, on the, the Undeportable now. <laughs> <laughs> the undeportable. Oh, shit. So you, uh, you've you been in the U.S. since you were like, what, two years old or something? Uh, I say I was uh, just becoming six. Oh, six. So it's about, about 40 years. Yeah, 40 years. Yeah. So I guess people would say, well, you managed to go this long without becoming a citizen. Why do it now? Hey, listen, man. I was driving without a license for seven years. I just got that in the summer, too. So, you know, I'm moving up. I'm moving up, you know. <laughs> man, oh, man. No, but but seriously, I mean, what's what are the advantages of being a citizen that you weren't? Because you were like, what, a legal resident or what do they call it? No. Uh, yeah, I was a legal alien. Legal alien. They, huh? But they changed that because it was making people look bad. <laughs> I was a resident alien. Resident alien, wow. Which, which I, I kind of got used to it after a while. So when they changed it and I got the green car, it was like, it's, now it's just the green car. I think Alien was more fun, you know? <laughs> we got it more girls. Fun. Yeah, we got more girls that way, you know? Sounds cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. every girl wants to sleep with an alien. Now, Dominican Dominator. I'm trying to... Did, did I give you that nickname or did somebody else? Or do you have any... I can't even remember. Do you know? If I have to guess, anybody would be you, you know? I think because I was doing an article for MD and I needed a title, and we're always trying to make everything with, uh, you know, no, the same, I same guess It will be you because it was first printed in MD. Okay. Because I think uh, we had already done Victor Victorious, Victor that, and I'm like, ah, we've done Victor. We got to do something with him being Dominican. Dominican, yeah, Dominican. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Dominator. I think it was brilliant. I think it was brilliant. Yeah. So once I. Uh, trademark you know you have to get a percentage of that you know <laughs> it would have been a terrible nickname if you were a bad bodybuilder luckily you did dominate many 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 shows you were at so it worked yeah out. yeah yeah even though hey. some people confused it with like some snm thing and i said no no it's bodybuilding all right it's bodybuilding <laughs> well you're in new york i bet there is a dominican dominatrix there somewhere there's probably a few oh uh, so they'll, go, they'll be hard. actually they'll be good at it because they're so mean to their men <laughs> so uh, yes. more, actually to those of you who don't know the Latin woman uh, by nature, yes, very, very domineering. Abusive. Very, very they're, abusive. They're so, awesome. so dominatrix will be definitely a good job for them. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, if you guys think you're going to, like, boss a woman around, stay the hell away from Latinas. You ain't bossing them around. Whoa. Nah, and nah, uh, nah. piss them off, and they will cut you. They will cut you. So. <laughs> yeah, I know, uh, I know. Yes, okay, now, I guess. <laughs> we're doing this interview because uh, – You've just made a, a pretty important decision that 2020 is going to be your final year as a pro. Um, how long, you know, how long were you thinking about when am I going to retire and what, what made you decide finally this is going to be my last season? Is no, no, you know, I mean, again, you know, will I come back like Johnny Jackson? Who knows? But uh, I, I said, you know what? Um, I haven't created that impact the last couple of years. You know, I did with Mayhem. But I um, went to the Olympia, didn't do too good. Yeah. And it's kind of one of those things where, you know, if I want to be in the game, I got to be impactful. And uh, yeah. I haven't had that impact. So um, the, last year, I was going to do, uh, was it Tampa? Yeah, then my daughter was born and a few glitches here and there. So didn't compete, you know, last year. This year I came back uh, with the Arnold. Uh, it, I felt I looked good, but not good enough. Not good enough to the judges that have seen me compete before. And uh, so that kind of left me, man, you know, I mean, do I still have it? So I had to regroup, replan. And uh, I said, let me come back. Let's see how I do at the Arnold. Let's see how I do, what I can do to really change my body and say, you know what? Hey, Victor still has it, you know? So retirement is definitely uh, one of those things. That, that I always thought of only to just uh, stay in one piece, you know, stay in one piece, stay healthy again, because uh, it, it does take a, a huge uh, impact on your health. Uh, bodybuilding is only as healthy as you can do it. 
yeah. you know. But my main goal is uh, to come back, come different, and 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 really leave that statement of, you know, just because I'm thinking about retirement doesn't mean I have to look like a retired bodybuilder. So if you do really well, could this retirement thing just be? It could, it might it change, could change. Yeah, the whole thing could just kind of change, uh, uh, Ron. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. It could change again, again. Health being first. I, 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 yeah. I go on health being first. I mean, um, I, I see a lot of bodybuilders trying to push and push and push to the point that they push to the point that they never want anything. They never, they never got that placing. And, and at the end now, not only did they not do well on stage, now they're left with half a body, you know, mm. as far as health. Yeah. And, and, and my main goal is health right now and, and have fun. I'm still having fun with it. Yeah. That's I mean, definitely. Yeah. yeah I'm still having it, fun. Still having great workouts. Yeah. As far as your physique goes, I mean, I don't know if you look as good as as your best ever still. I, you know, honestly, I don't know. But when you look at yourself, how do you – do you see any decline or do you think you're still holding up? Because I don't see, like, torn body parts. I don't see any nerve damage. I don't see anything that would say, shit, this guy, he's got to go. It's time to go. Yeah, again, yeah, I don't see that yet myself. Of course, size is not there, the size that I had before. Mm. But um, I am looking at myself as I started this prep, and it's like, whoa. Okay. Remember how you, how you start getting ready for that show, and the first month, you're, you're even in the amateurs, you're not really into it. But once you start seeing the changes, yeah. you start really getting into it. That's where I'm at right now. The changes are happening, um, and, and it's very exciting. And now it's 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 you know I'm being more optimistic about stepping on this stage. And uh, and I gotta say, this is uh, a, a last year was a good lineup, but I think this year. Mm. Uh, takes the cake, you know, dude. <laughs> I mean, it's stacked. It's stacked, and uh, Bonac, uh, you, you know, Kuklo, uh, Josh, yeah. Cedric, Sergio, yep. Rami, Roly. Holy crap, dude! <laughs> no, De- you, did I say Dexter? Going, Dexter? Again, yeah, mm. Dexter, and you know, you see these guys. You know, the, these these are top five Olympia guys, top six. Yeah. So being on the stage with them, being able to knock out one or two of those guys. I'm still in it, baby. That that's that's what's gonna be talking. So, th- this is not gonna be a walk in the park uh, workout. I'm definitely doing everything and anything to uh, maximize uh, my uh, muscle building potential, uh, my, my health as well. You know, I'm getting blood work uh, more often than none now, just to make sure I stay on top of it. And uh, you know, got the IVs, got the, you know, you name it. I'm doing it. But if the body does not bring that impactful look, you know, I mean, you got to start thinking about it, you know? I mean, last year people say, yeah, you look good. Yeah. You could have placed higher, you know, could have, would have, should have, whatever. That's, that's done. That doesn't matter. You know, the whole point is those judges, they see, see in their eyes that I'm competitive. They give me that call out and uh, that's going to change the course of history. Yeah, because, I mean, yeah, we talk about the smaller shows, and it would be easier for you to jump in. There's a lot of shows you could do and probably win. There's there's some shows we had last year where the lineups, I was like, oh, my God. Is this really a yeah, pro show? Yeah, again, Ron, and, and I don't want to take away from these guys that do show up to those shows or anything like that. It's just, um, you know, I, I like anything that's scary and hard, you know. Yeah. The more difficult it is, I think it's just uh, uh, it makes me, you know, train harder, work harder, and want it more, you know? You what do I like do the smaller challenge, shows to qualify? Is, sorry, what was that? So you do enjoy a challenge. I figured that out about yeah, your Yeah, yeah, I always enjoy a challenge, you know. That's why I decided, you know, five baby mamas, you know, five different <laughs> sets of hormones attacking me every month. Uh, oh, dude. You know, you know I, I, I like that. <laughs> and guess what? My head is still intact. I don't know how, but... Uh, but, um, yeah, you know, I, I, I really want to come into this show and really come in and, and, and make that difference from last year. So right now, I got to beat me from last year. Like, last year, it's, it's uh, that's what I have pictured, that's what I have, and that's what I want to beat, you know? Of course, with a few guys uh, within the, the top 10 Olympia along the way. So, you know, I, was, I thought your condition was really, really good at the Arnold last year. Uh, you know, I wouldn't 
I, I will always knock people when they're not in shape, but you were in shape. It's just, yeah, I, I would have liked to see some of that pop, the, the fullness that I used to see. The how do fullness. You get, how do you get exactly. that back? That's, that's what I'm working on right now. So I started early. I started in November. Oh. You know, um, again, just so I could play around with the food, you know, every Thursday, go a little, you know, like try to plan out that Thursday before the show. Mm. So every Thursday I, I load up and see how it goes. I load oh, up wow. and, and see, how you know, just to kind of measure it out. And that that's mm. going to continue going all the way up until the show and then not playing so much the last month. But um, trying to peel down as much as I can without sacrificing the muscle, but but the pop. It's all about the pop, you know. You can look good, you can look big, but when you do that, when you flex and you actually show that muscle, it's got to have the lines. It's got to have the lines. Uh, uh, my skin is way up to par right now, so I'm going to have nice, glorious, nice, soft, good-looking skin. As far as that, you know, I, I, I stay a lot of uh, working with dermatologist uh and um you know it, it's just that muscle i gotta yeah. work on that muscle pop and you've seen it with many pros over the years they, they're big as hell they go up there do a double bicep and it's like okay we're still waiting for it to come out and yeah, yeah. and nothing and the same thing on that back pose you know you right. can have a big back you can be veiny but i don't think veiny is beautiful you know <laughs> i think muscle pop makes up all the muscle and the lines, you know, that's what I want to bring in from what I, uh, I'm used to having back in the days. And that's what I want to bring to that stage. And, and, you know, I want those judges to really, uh, say, okay, I can acknowledge it and place me well. So are you uh, prepping yourself or are you working with somebody for the show? Yeah. Working with some, I put a good team together, you know, I still got uh Victor Munoz, um, right now, um, always pro edge. You know, like my training with him, um, doing uh, cryo, my friend's cryotherapy place in Bayonne. Nice. Um, uh, working with this uh, young kid, Scott Cohn. Um, he, he's good at uh, reading blood work and working my diet. And uh, believe it or not, um, guess what? Guess who came out of the woodwork? Uh, Could have been a uh, name. Give me a name. Chris Aceto. No, he's he's been in the woodwork. Chris Aceto has probably like two hundred athletes on any yeah, given month. Chad Nichols, boom. Yeah. On the okay. Money, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 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 Chad yeah. Nichols. So I gotta give Chad the call, and uh, I, I had to tell the guys in my team, you know what, you guys got to deal with it, you know, because <laughs> again, I'm the athlete. I put the team together, you know. Yeah. So who put this thing together? Me. Me. That's Tussle. who. Who I trust? <laughs> yeah. Me. Awesome. Yeah, so everybody's got to be able to work with me, and it's got to work again to help me bring out the best. And uh, what and, shows and, did Chad prep you for? That uh, he prepped you for a few of your wins, didn't you? Yeah, the last one we did uh, was when I got second after my knee injury to Kai Green. Two thousand nine. My yep. first, yeah, that was my first show back uh, from my knee injury, and uh, and just Kai came out and just freaking did his thing, man. So, but but, but I was happy. Was happy with the condition. Uh, you know, not bad for a torn knee for the first six months of uh, away, and then coming back to actually train, and and it, it was uh, it wasn't bad. You know, yeah. so I was still happy, and and uh, that's I, I want to come back stronger. You know, this time around. Chad Nichols. Okay, good. To, good glad to hear, glad to hear you're teaming up with him because, yeah, I, I remembered you guys were made a good team in the past. So that's cool. Uh, I want to take you down memory lane. I just want you to tell us some things you remember about s some of your first experiences in the sport. So your first pro show was 2001 Night of Champions. It was still called Night of Champions back then. Night of Champions, yes. And I remember seeing you guest pose in Boston. I think it was four weeks before that, yes. roughly. And Mike Katz was the MC, the late Mike Katz. Pumping Mike Katz. Around. And uh, he... He had like no filter, that guy, especially toward toward the uh, the later part of his latter part of his life. And you came off stage. He's like, "Well, Victor looks good. He still still needs to drop a bunch of fat in the water." And everyone's like, "Oh, dude, did you just say yeah. that about our guest poser?" But, yeah, uh, it's okay though. You know what? It's my my cats, and and there's one thing I, I do have uh, is a lot of respect for all these pros, uh, especially the older pros. 
You know, mm-hmm. you can't change them. That's who they are. That's where they'll be. And if you're going to get offended by an honest opinion, mm-hmm. you're too soft, man. You're too soft, you know. It's a lot of snowflakes and, and, uh, out there. And I never, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> yeah, they're very delicate, very delicate. Yeah, very delicate, and uh, for me, an honest opinion, a raw opinion, it, 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 is, 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 I can't handle it, you yeah. know. Most people can't handle the truth, you know. They usually want the truth with a little bullshit on the side. Right. You know, and, and, uh, and, and that, that was, I was okay, because when he said that, I was like, man, I want to come back, and I want to really do good, and, and I hope he sees me win the show down the line so it was motivating and 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 he spoke about me so he's a legend and he spoke about me so that's what mattered (laughs) so what do you remember most about your first pro show because you were still competing in the tri-state area you didn't leave the tri-state area until after your first pro show if i recall i know i know (laughs) my first pro show was uh yeah night of champions i remember in the beacon yeah. Uh, different rooms, different floors. I think it was a great venue. I think if I ever do a pro show in New York, I think I'll take it back there. Mm-hmm. You know, because it it, it was very uh, well put together, and, and I just like the theater setting. No matter what part of the theater you sat on, it was a good seat. Yeah. You know, so the, you get very few places. And then the second show, uh, I believe, was uh, um, Iron Man. Oh, the pro. It was Iron the first Man. one. First one I actually had a fly out, did everything wrong, they didn't pack my food right. I mean, you name it, and I still I I think I got like ninth place or something. Yeah. You know, and, and it was uh again, I won just on shape. I, I did good just because of shape. But as yeah. far as I was holding a ton of water that I couldn't drop it no matter what. Mm-hmm. And I think I would think I was just looking forward to enjoying LA afterwards and uh yeah that, that was those were my first ones and then i think after that i did the uh the arnold yeah but how, how long did it take you doing pro shows before you felt sort of at ease where like uh you know i know i've talked to a lot of guys and they say their first first show first couple shows they're backstage and they're they're kind of intimidated by the more established guys yes. and they keep to themselves and they're kind of afraid to talk to anybody and how long did it take you before you felt comfortable as a pro at these shows I mean, uh, it happens. It happens in the amateur shows, you know, me just going to the first one, and, and especially happens in the pro show because everybody looks pretty comfortable. They know what they're doing. Um, they know what, you know, the protocols. I had none. Mm. I had zero, you know. Night uh, of Champions was here in New York City. I still had no clue. I'm just w- walking around, you know, saying what's up to the guys and, and uh, Iron Man, same thing. I'm totally unprepared. Uh, I, um, and there was the, uh, again, the um, Arnold Classic. So, yeah, so the confusion was there. It was, it, it, it was real, you know. Yeah. And I said, I, I can't do this anymore. Hmm. I can't do this anymore. And that's when I uh, made that phone call to Chris. I was hmm. like, listen, I, I'm confident. I know I'm training hard. I know I'm dieting hard. But I'm not bringing that that confidence of I know I'm in shape. Yeah, you know. And once I gave Chris that call, it was a uh, boom. That's it, done. So you did. You prepped yourself your first few pro shows. It sounds like. Yeah, prepping myself. You know, I had Gino Sylvain help me. Uh, uh, rest in peace, uh, Gino mm-hmm. Sylvain helped uh, Dexter too in the past. Uh, um, uh, Victor Munoz, uh, again, Victor Munoz did all my prep from amateurs and, uh, but I, I felt I just needed, you know, I needed a little bit more aggressive, you know, yeah. come on coach. I'm not saying this in a negative way. All right. Cause he's going to attack me with that. You know, he's Cuban, yeah. you know, so <laughs> I, I Munoz had to contact is Chris. I know that. Munoz is Cuban. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I had to contact Chris and, uh, and, and my boy, Anthony Aponte also, I don't know about Chris, I don't know. And that's one thing I realized when, when you make a decision, uh, all you amateurs out there, um, your new pros out there, when you make a decision, you know what, stick with it. Mm-hmm. You know, there's going to be people in your camp that, that are not going to be comfortable with whatever. But you know what, as long as you made that decision, you feel comfortable, roll with it. Because I did it and, and it turned out well, you know, and uh, also not working with Chris when I switched to uh, Chai, at the end of the day, we all getting paid. It's a business. 
this is not a friendship. It was, you know, not just a, a, a friendly thing that you do together. You know, if it was that, you know, they wouldn't charge me for any shows then. Right. You know, yeah. everybody's getting paid. Everybody's <laughs> making money, you know. So it was just one of those uh, calls that you have to make, you know. So 2002 was your first Arnold Classic. 2004 was your first Mr. Olympia. That's the big show for everybody in the sport. That's the one everybody dreams about competing in. What was your first Olympia like from what you remember? Um, it was probably the toughest, not just because it was the Olympia, but because uh, first thing I, I have to say, I, I regret it not doing 2003 Olympia. Mm. You know, mm. I should have just done it. You know, it was there. It was after the win of the Natty Champions. I yeah. should have just done it, got my ass kicked, and that usually helps me. It helps me come <laughs> back better. Yeah. You know, good ass kicking, good suffering always keeps me alive, and uh, it opens up my eyes a little bit more. Mm. Um, so coming back to 2004, you know, I, ha I already had the gym open mm. uh, a couple of years, and uh, unfortunately it, it was a bad year because uh, – the landlord just scammed me out of my building Oof. in the gym. So as I left to go compete for the Olympia, I didn't know he was uh, started the process of evicting us from the gym. Oh my God. So I land uh, Wednesday. They're telling me they're padlocking the gym. So what can I do? I, I was just started working out again. No food packed. You know, oh. kind of my I did a Michael Lockett, you know, without the guy giving genetics. You yeah. know, I know you, Michael. You always carry chips and dips. Twi Twizzlers. <laughs> he likes Twizzlers. From Twizzlers, yeah. And this guy comes in full for no freaking God given reason. You know, I hate you, Mike. <laughs> we all we all love him and hate him at the same uh, time. You know, he knows that. He knows that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm prepared. Uh, so what do I do? Other, you know, work out. I gambled. I gambled all night, gambled Thursday night, and uh, uh, I know Chris. Chris was behind me, and uh, just the stress alone. And he know he knew that the stress alone. I looked great before I walked out of my room, mm. and uh, it just it was one of those things where stress you just hold water. Yeah, I mean it happens. But you know, I did get ninth. You know, and. and uh, uh, um, most people said I was genetics, but had I held it tighter, yeah, I, I would have definitely been within the players of the top six, you know, with the big names. But uh, ninth uh, was good. I, I was happy. It could have been happier, but uh, at the same time, very upset because I knew uh, my gym was not going to be there when I got how, back. How do you? How do you? You know, people say, "Well, you, you got to relax. You got to stay calm." Who who could stay calm in a situation like that? That was just, you can oh. because all you're doing is what could, what could I have done? You know, I know what I could have done, but then would have been another case. I didn't need another case, you know. Mm. Oh, more lawyers, you know. So <laughs> so it, it's one of those things where I was just like, man, I mean, why? Like I don't understand. And you're thinking, and and you know you have to have a meal, so you you eat it an hour late and. You know you have to sleep, but you're not sleeping. And, and you know when you sleep, you get harder. You absorb the carbs. You get tighter, and, and none of those things were happening. So, mm. so Chris was working against the grain with me, and uh, I was just, uh, you know, enjoying the Olympia, but not at the fullest. Okay, yeah, that was so. That was a pretty rough way to start your Olympia experience, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm gonna read through your pro wins because I want these people out there, the youngsters, to know. We just talked about 2003 United Champions. That was your first pro win. 2004, Show of Strength. Good show that we no longer have. 2007, Arnold Classic. Nice title. 2011, Arnold Classic Europe in Spain, which unfortunately didn't things didn't go well right after that. We'll, talk, we'll probably mention yeah. that later. 2013, you won the Toronto Pro. 2014, Tampa Pro. 2016, Baltimore Pro. 2017, Muscle Mayhem, Kansas. Out of those eight wins, Victor, which one was meant the most to you i mean um i have to say you know not taking away from any win a win is always a great win and, and always they always seem surreal mm. but uh i would have to say arnold classic 2007 because not of course not just because it's arnold not just because it's the biggest bodybuilding show you know in the world after the olympia 
Yeah. And, and you get to meet Arno and shake his hand. But uh, also, it was also the support. The support I got from uh, people from my country flew over. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of my friends and, and most importantly, uh, my best friend, Mike, mm-hmm. who uh, passed away. Uh, he drove with a bad back, just finished getting operated. Mm-hmm. He, he, he rented a, a little Toyota and drove from Philly about eight and a half hours, nine hours. Mike, Mike McGuckin, right? Mike McGuckin, yes. Uh, and uh, he drove and he made it. And he did one of those things of, uh, you know, Mad Max. He goes, I'm going to witness this win. <laughs> I'm going to witness this. Man. And after that win, that's all he said was like, wow, I, I can't believe I witnessed you win one of the biggest shows. And now it's going to be the Olympia. And, uh, and and that's, you know, last last show, actually, you know, he attended of mine and, mm. uh, you know, miss him very much. Yeah. And without him, I, I would have never even, you know, been able to do the 2005 Olympia because he actually was able to get me a private sponsor for that uh, for that Olympia. Yeah, I remember Mike from back in the 90s when I used to work for a guy named Luz Wick out in California. Luz Wick, yes. Mike would be like his talent scout in that whole area, Philadelphia, yes. I guess New Jersey. So he would let Lou know about like up and coming, you know, young guys that showed a lot of potential. And I, I don't, I think it was probably too early. We didn't hear about you because I was out of there before you started. Yeah, nice. you were just a yeah, just yeah. Starting I met to... Mike later on. I met him later, uh, probably like ninety, I think ninety nine, two thousand. Yeah. yeah. So, of all the pros that you've competed with uh, and known, which ones would you say are true friends? True friends, uh, I mean, Dennis James mm. is definitely one of them. You know, uh, yeah. he, he was one of the ones that, no matter what, you know, even if you not if you're not a good friend of Dennis James and you say, Hey Dennis, I'm in the pits, he'll he'll do whatever for you. Mm. You know? Um definitely uh Dennis Wolf, you know, always uh loved him and, and his family. Mm. Um Troy Alves, um and of course the the, the Dominicans of the bodybuilding world. Yeah, I was, I was waiting, I was like, the- shit, he better say Jonathan or Juan. Come on, Jeez. man. You know, can always have them first because they're always first, you know. But they know that already. Is is John De La Rosa, you know, his family is my family. And then Juan Morel, you know, um, happy to always see him. I mean, his grind is is uh, is just ridiculous. His mm-hmm. grind is ridiculous. Uh, it's crazy and it's uh, definitely energizing. And he's one of the, uh, one of those. Uh, good energetic uh bodybuilders you know even though uh you know now's a party should have been my trademark because... <laughs> now it's a party i don't know it kind of fits them yeah. though yeah 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 but where's the party juan but where's the party though <laughs> have you ever had one of his wife's giant cookies they haven't sent me any yet you know yeah my wife yeah. is pissed because she sells them but she only sells them for like five minutes and then she gets like a thousand orders and shuts it all down so she yeah. never got. They look oh. like they're about the size of a like a baby's head or something. These cookies. Oh uh, yeah, I think I order my smaller. For some reason, <laughs> when I see a big cookie, I don't want to eat more than what it is. It's oh, this just, is you know. all her cookies. They're you know they're not cheap, but they're huge. It's like probably five regular cookies in one. Yeah, yeah. So if you hear me out there, Diesel doll, I want my cookie. All right. Yeah, yeah Angelica used to make my cookies before. Oh, Angelica uh, Nebia. No, no. Hello, Angelica Nebbia. No, not her. It was Angelica Driscoll. Driscoll. She actually, okay. uh, she helped me uh, make my cookies to carb up for the 07 uh, yeah. Arno and the 07 Olympia and a few Olympias after that. You know what you're always good at, Victor, is you acknowledge like every person that's ever helped you. You always do that. I have to, man. You know, you don't I have mean, to. No, you don't have to. But I you, mean, you do. no, no. <laughs> most people don't. They, yeah, they don't have to. But at the end of the day, you know, even though you are standing up there and alone on that stage you receive the trophy alone but uh and and people say Ain't nobody helped me i'm like that you're lying you're lying wow. you know people helped you you know the person who helped you put that weight back they helped you you know the person who's helping you cook they helped you the person who's mailing your food they helped you the person who gave you the free supplement or free this or free that they helped you somebody's helping that's true 
you know, unless you're getting ready in freaking, I don't know, uh, Siberia and, <laughs> and you're growing your own Dennis livestock. Dennis is originally from Siberia, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's always somebody helping. There's always somebody helping and, 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 and being honest with you. And, you know, I mean, for me, it's always been, you know, my training partner, uh, Dean Lewis, uh, Victor, the whole crew, you know, my wife, Norma, and, uh, Oh, no, all my kids' mothers that I was with before, and uh, they all helped me. So I'm not taking anything away from anybody because uh, it, it, everybody, my kids helped me, when they, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, they probably say, Dad, you need to twist a little more on your front double bicep. Your waist is looking a little wide when you do it this way. Yeah. <laughs> are, are any, do any of your kids really follow the sport yet and, and kind of know what it's all about? No, they don't follow it. Not at all. Uh, my Good daughter's into ballet. Yeah, yeah. My daughter's into ballet. Uh, she, she, you know, she went to uh, New York Pro and she saw I got second to Big Romney and and it, you know she was so upset and I hated. It. <laughs> and I was like, baby, it, it, it's like I won. You know, it's like I won. You're here. You know. So um, my son, uh, he's an avid, healthy, you know, weightlifter, but does not follow bodybuilding. You know. And just you know, love sports, wrestling, and I think he eats more than me. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know how, but um, oh, yeah, geez. my kids, my kids just, uh, you know, my, my oldest son, also 29, he's, he's autistic, so he, he and he's more severe, so uh, uh it, it's harder for them. And my girls are just girls, you know, yeah. I mean, do they need to follow it? They just they know. <laughs> As long as, they, as long as they know they were a fan of you, that's all they really Yeah, know. that's it. That's yeah. all. You know, I think I think more people uh, that are friends with my family follow it more than my family. And then they get a little embarrassed when they don't know my stats or what show I'm doing or what last show I did. So they get a little embarrassed and then they say, he's not your brother. He's not your cousin. You don't know this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I wouldn't expect everyone to know all the, you know, like my you know, people, especially when they're a little older, they don't, it, it's hard for them to follow things. Like my mother used to tell everyone I wrote for muscle fitness. I said, I don't write for muscle and fitness, mom. <laughs> I've never written for muscle and fitness, but she still kept saying that for years and years. Until uh, she, I don't know. Okay, uh, Jay, that's it. I, I've gone through this, this list of all the trials and tribulations of Victor before, but I always like to, cause I don't know anyone who's gone through as much shit as you have. I really don't. So uh, tell me no. if I missed anything here. Okay, so here's what I got. Uh, incarcerated twice, unfortunately. Second time was for not being a citizen. I was coming back from a win. They threw you away for eight months. That was probably the, the first time. It was only like a month. That was no big deal. Um, tore a peck. You still won the Arnold. Was that the year that you won the partial. Arnold? Partial. Uh, that year, I believe I got fifth. Partial tear about three weeks out. Okay. Uh, your knee injury, that happened after you won the 2007 Arnold. Uh, you tore your, what did you, you tore your patellar tendon that time? Yeah. Dude. Okay. That was, that was bad. But then you're arm wrestling in Mexico. <laughs> Some guy makes you arm wrestle him and spiral fracture of the, yeah, no. the humerus up here. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Uh, right arm. Yeah. Left knee, right arm. Yeah. Left knee, right arm. Uh, you lost your sister. She was a, a murder victim. Oh, that horrible. Was, dude, that was like out of CSI. That was like crazy. Uh, your parents both passed away since I've known you, I believe, right? Yeah, I lost a person every year starting in 2006. Dude. Uh, uh, any other siblings, uh, or was your sister uh, the only one? I, I, I never ever brought it up in an Olympic press conference, though, to get some pity out of it, though. No, because, you know, <laughs> if you, we, we you talked know. about you lost your gym. Uh, you lost your restaurant while you were uh, being detained for not being a citizen in yeah, 2011. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's everything. Did I did I miss anything? Yeah, it's a few, few things, a lot of things you miss, you know. But why shine the light on the negative, you know? I mean, come on. Two arrests sounds beautiful, though. Yeah, but I mean... Uh, I wish to only two. <laughs> you know? Okay, but I mean, shit. That's, yeah. And, any, uh, one of those, any one of those things I've seen knock, knock people out of the sport for a good few years or forever in some cases. I mean, and I have seen it. And uh, I remember I used to read, you know, Hard Times, you know. Uh, mm. And I remember seeing a hard time and the bodybuilder disappear. And I would ask myself what happened. What happened at that time it was a little bit harder to find out because we had, you know. You're, you're uh, talking about Peter, Mc, 
Peter McGuff's column, Hard Times in Flex Magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a so, great gossip. Right? Yeah, I, I didn't know I could name it. I didn't want to, you okay. know. It's Peter, it's Peter. We love Peter. <laughs> yeah, I love Peter, you know. But, um, yeah, I would wonder, you know, but, you know, internet wasn't as, uh, you know, prevalent as it is now, and uh, you couldn't find these people. So one, one of the reasons why, when I would go through a hard time, um, why I continue bodybuilding? Because this was the only way for me to deal with those hard times. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think had I stopped or did anything to not bodybuild, I think it would have multiplied the suffering mm -hmm. of those hard times. And I, and I think I would have just lost my cool and I would have lost any of those cases or anything that happened. You know, so uh, that, that was a way for me to deal with with everything you know just continue body but don't stop keep going and and uh you know hard times happen you know yeah. uh so so quitting was definitely was not one of those options you know now um one thing people remember is ronnie coleman people asked him toward the end of his reign who's going to be mr olympia after you and he said you he said victor martinez yeah he, he did he, he pegged you as the guy with the best what he felt was the best potential to, to come after him have you ever talked to Ronnie, you know, in recent years about that? Hey, Ronnie, remember when you said I'd be the next Mr. Olympia? Yeah, and you said, yeah. and you said, and you were. <laughs> you were, man. And they you were. You. <laughs> and you were. So, oh, man. he was right, you know, he was right. And uh, what's good about it is, uh, you know, the, the fans now and now with social media, they keep uh, having now these, uh, you know, where they put these bars, you know, choose who won, and they put the pictures side by side. So, uh, even now, 2020, I'm still winning the 2007 Olympia. <laughs> well, it's kind of like the people's champion thing, right? Yeah, which is great, you know. So, you, you know, you won it then, you know, a uh, little judge glitch, and uh, it, you're still winning it now. So yeah. it, it's great, you know, that people uh, people have a good set of eyes, you know, and they're not even, you know, judges. Let's talk about uh, supplement companies because there are some people – very high up in the sport uh, competing, who have been with many, many, many companies. Uh, I'm not going to name names or how many companies they've been with, but it's it's not uncommon for some of these guys to go through six six to 12 different companies over the course of their careers. You have been with MHP how long now? Uh, 15 years. Wow. That has got to be some kind of record. Yeah, it's gotta about be. 15 years, uh, MHP, and, um, uh, and, and I always thank them. I mean, they had... Many reasons to let me go, but uh, because they didn't, that's why I gave them, you know, many reasons uh, to, you know, let them know that their decision w was not, you know, was not a bad decision. Yeah, like, why and, do you think uh, it's worked so well? Because it's been obviously a great partnership or you would have left them or they would have dropped you at some point in these. Yeah, years. they could have. They could have. And uh, again, you know, um, they kept me and, and the only way I can uh, tell them or show them that, you know, this wasn't a bad decision was by training my ass off and winning shows. Yeah. And, and that's, and, and it will work out. So, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Gerard, MHP. And, uh, and I kept hammering it out. I kept hammering and, and, and just kept going and, and they kept me and, and every year that passed by was one more year. I was grateful. So, and you had people, you had companies coming to you in that time trying to get you away from them, too. Yeah, I mean, a couple of companies, they offered me, you know, probably about a hundred grand more. But that hundred grand would have been nothing by now. Yeah. Because I probably would have been with another 15 companies ever since then. Yeah, true. You know, because a lot of times uh, you can, they can show you the big money. But it, it's it's one thing, loyalty and uh you know, consistency is two different things, you know, um, because, uh, I, I mean, everybody wants to get the best out of their company. Not doesn't mean they want you to have the best for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's one of those things that I decided it's like, yeah, it's good money. It's, I can see it. I need it, but no, my loyalty is to where they looked out for me. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to entertain that. Yeah. That, that's another thing I want, I've want. i always noticed about you. Loyalty is something, that's a quality you, you really put a lot of importance on. It's very, very important to you that you're loyal to uh, the people that deserve it and you give it back to people and companies that have, that have been loyal to you. So that's, that's, not, that's not that common these days, put it that way. 
No, it's not. no, it's not. It's not, you know, because I, I have all these shows and uh, many people will say, hey, I'm going to support you in these shows. I'm going to. And nobody really helps. Mm. You know, nobody really helps. And words are just, you know, words that mean nothing and they blow in the wind. And, uh, you know, so now I don't hold that grudge against them. I just know, you know, don't ask me for shit. You know? <laughs> It's true. Don't ask me yeah. shit. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I know when I did favors, I never expected anything back. But I would think if I were asked for a favor, they would just return it. But most people don't repay their favors. Mm. And uh, that, that's why right now I'm just focusing on my shows here. Uh, the one in the Bronx um, in, in yeah, VR. With, so with Victor Martinez shows. Legends, that's a show you do every August in the Bronx, right? Yes, yes. That, that, that one's going to stay there as long as uh, I'm around and the uh, NPC uh, still supports me and, and allows me to have it. And and, uh, and Steve, you know, uh, uh, Steve's always been uh, one of my biggest uh, uh, help uh, in this industry, you know. So as long as I could have it, you know, I try to branch out to the Dominican Republic, uh, but uh, <laughs> my people are tough, man. Mm. <laughs> uh, people are tough uh, they're tough to deal with um i gotta say so so um i did, did one show uh, uh and i'm sorry i let the ifp be down with this show because i think i did a spectacular show yeah great event great venue and uh i didn't get the support you know so support is not coming it's not happening and, and uh, uh and again i was just bringing something to my island so the athletes can have a future in, 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 in bodybuilding. That's what uh, John and I decided. Let's do it. And uh, it didn't pan out. So I did the second one. I cut it by 75%, you know, on the cost. And uh, it did okay. Still not great, you know. But then when you're competing with a, a, an organization that's been there forever mm. and you're bringing, reintroducing the MPC, uh, it, it's, uh, it's hard, especially when you don't have the backing, you know, yeah. you know, everybody can yes you to death doesn't mean it's, it's a yes, right. you know? So, so now, um, I canceled the third show, which was going to happen, uh, in October, cancel that because I didn't want to deal with, with, with stressing out before the Arnold, I'd rather put, you know, in right. something I can control. So I said, let me just put my focus on the Arnold. And come back, do maybe another one in May, uh, Legends in May, and then uh, let's see what happens. Maybe we go to another country. You yeah, because I mean, uh, if if you retire, was is that something you'd like to do more of? Contest promotion. I love doing or? shows. I love doing shows. I I love uh, you know putting on a good stage for the athletes. I love taking care of the athletes. Uh, um, Love working with, with, with the judges. I love taking care of the judges. It's like, you know what? Just enjoy your stay. Just focus on, you know, the panel and, 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 mm -hmm. and you know, the athletes and that's it, you know. So I, I love taking care of people. I love taking care of people, showing them a good time. That's what I do. That's why, you know, I always put these good parties after the Olympia. You <laughs> that's know? right. <laughs> so, you know, to invite my friends. But, uh, but this year, though, I'm going to do it different, you know. If you've been to my party at the Olympia, you're invited. If you've been invited, you haven't come. Don't bother coming. And did, did you do the party at the? <laughs> did you do the party at the last Olympia? Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh? Yeah, where's where yeah, was my invite, you know? dude? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I just I just invite people. So now this year's just gonna be handpicked invitation. You know. Okay. Well, remember a brother next it's time. It's tap. You know, you're gonna get tapped. You're gonna get tapped. You know, you're gonna oh, be shit. tapped. And uh, and again. Uh, in my parties, you, you come in, everything's supplied. You know, you're gonna have your drinks, you're gonna have your water. You, you chill. That's it. And, and people and don't the, realize you actually worked in the nightclub industry for years before you were a pro bodybuilder, right? Yes. Yeah. So yes. you know how to you know how to do this the right way. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's all about you know uh, having a good time and and, and 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 creating you know that good relationship with people within the industry. That's it. Good people within the industry. And if, you know, you do start a fight, you know, in my party, you know, I will personally fight you <laughs> in my party, you know, unless, you know, you got to be a good, you know, <laughs> just behave. Be, be. That's it, man. I got to say, uh, you know, considering all the hormones and the attitudes, I don't, 
I haven't seen too many fights ever at these at these parties with bodybuilders. I think no, no, everybody as a group, gets they're pretty along. chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. most people are chill, you know. But definitely, uh, I I turn it up in mind though. I turn it mm-hmm. up in mind, and and people uh, they come back and they, they know why. They know why because I I, I create that vibe, you know, that yeah. good vibe. So, yeah. but but uh, no parties. There won't be any parties again to the Olympia. So <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. For the you best. Know. So okay. So twenty years. This may or may not be your last year as a pro. Uh, in the title, I used the clickbait title that this is your last year. So sorry, everybody, if you fell for the clickbait. Ha ha. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, if I don't do clickbait, you're not going to click. Uh, I know. Uh, I know, right? It could be his last year, guys. So it's not like I'm lying. Could uh, be, possibly, perhaps. I don't know. But Johnny. Know. So Johnny's going to be at the, at the Arnold, huh? Correct. Correct. That'll be great. That'll be great. You guys are the same age. I believe he's 46, too. Yeah. Yeah, Johnny, I think uh, with Dexter on the helm. Dexter is obviously the uh, he's got he's in the lead as far as he's been uh, a pro the longest ninety eight you were two thousand Johnny was two thousand one I believe you three are the longest active pros currently competing yeah yeah and again you know make it good make it fun and 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 give a lot of guys in, in their forties a lot of hope come on yeah, you guys well, can do it you know I mean yeah. I'm past that, dude. I'm me and Dexter are past our forties, so uh, we we look to you, young guys. <laughs> we look at you, young guys, for inspiration now. <laughs> oh man, I can't well, wait. Uh, It'll be a I, good show. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to the Arnold. I want to see. I always want to see everyone at their very best. I'd like to see you at eat better than I've seen you in a long time. I want to see you in the first call out, put oh, in the middle. Yeah, you know? baby. How awesome first would that be? Out. First oh. call out. In the middle or next to the guy in the middle or somewhere, somewhere yeah, right in the mix. Yeah, that, that again, it's it's uh, one of those feelings that, you know, everybody knows. That first call out feeling is, is one of those feelings that never gets old. It, it, it's always as prepared as you are is always very surprising. Yeah. And it, it, it just, you know, cranks things up, you know. Uh, you can you see can the guys, on, everyone yeah. gets excited. Everyone's like, yes. They do the fist pump when they get their name called. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and it's, it's a great feeling. And that's what you aim for. And, uh, you know, seeing the guys, seeing uh, Brandon Curry uh, last year win the Olympia. Um, you know, Sean Roden won Olympia. And, and just seeing these guys, uh, it, it's very motivational. So, uh, and, and that's why I always, even I haven't competed in the Olympia, I haven't missed watching any of the Olympias. And, uh, um, you gotta get that fire. You gotta spark that flame. Yeah, I mean, I give, I gotta hand it to you because twenty years as a pro, most guys were by this point they'd be like, Ugh. you know, they wouldn't have any more passion for it. They, they would have oh. either retired or just they'd be very bitter and like, no, no excitement. But you still, you still sound bitter, like you have that excitement about. Yeah, it. bitter is not is definitely one of the things that I, I didn't want to have. Regardless, I mean, yes, this show didn't go your way. Yes, that. Judging and go your way, you know. Bitterness is one of those things I never really wanted or ever, you know, look to have, you know, because win some, lose some. At the end of the day, you know, it's all about the str- the struggle, the prep, you know, the grind, getting ready. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, yeah. So. Um. Yeah. No. I want to. I want to thank. Uh, actually, you know. Um. Congratulate. Um, Boston Mass on his new gym. Oh yeah, you know? uh, he's he's got a new gym. I don't know if it's open yet. Not yet. Um, We're waiting. We're waiting. Yeah, but uh, you know, want to congratulate him though for for starting that up. You know, um, you know, uh, 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 Dan, uh, Stan McQuay for his retirement gave us some good years, and uh, and Flex Wheeler, man, Flex mm-hmm. Wheeler rooting for you. Um, it, it was uh, one of those things that you don't wish on anybody you hope they come out of it and unfortunately um you know he's still alive which is great unfortunately you know they had to do the amputation but uh he if anybody can handle it he's one of those headstrong guys that can mm. um and uh you know want want you guys to always support if you can you know donate you know to his GoFundMe, you know i mean we guys were there for you entertaining you guys for many years and uh Please, please, guys. Uh, you know, we not not we not on stage, some of us, but you know, we can still always use the support. Yeah, cool. T- 
Typical Victor, man. Always looking out for other people. <laughs> That's what you, you're, oh, you're really good like that, man. people. No, well, you're a good guy. Well, Victor, thank you. Thank you for taking all the time. Uh, like, hope this prep goes very, very well. Hope to see you at your best in a long time. And I want to see yeah. you dominate that Arnold Classic stage in Columbus, Ohio. Yes. Oh, man. And now I go to the gym. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, <laughs> thank you, Ron. Thank you, all, everybody. Again, muscular development fans for all these years, you know. And keep subscribing, okay? And uh, be part of uh, mdmusculardevelopment.com, all right? Get on those forums, guys. Cool, man. All right, thanks for Ron Line Report. Right. It's been Ron with Victor Martinez. Thank